So in the last problem, we considered how much you weigh as an external force accelerates you. That is, you saw that as an elevator starts to accelerate upward, there is an apparent increase in your weight due to the additional force acted upon you, by, in this case, by the elevator. In this session, let's take a look at what happens when the elevator reaches constant velocity, that is, acceleration is zero, and let's see what happens when the elevator starts to slow down and see what happens to your apparent weight. So to review a few things, we said that we had a person in an elevator, they ha had a weight of 180 pounds, which was about 801 newtons, and we used the relationship that relates your weight in units of newtons to your mass, and we figured out that the mass of this person, a person with a weight of 180 pounds or 801 newtons, was about 81.7 kilograms. So let's take a look at this case here, all right? So let's take a look at what happens when you're in an elevator that's moving at constant velocity. So the first thing you need to do is draw a free body diagram. So we're going to represent the forces acting on the person. We know that there's one force acting on this person. The force of gravity is definitely pulling this person downward towards the earth. And that's why the weight vector is in the downward direction. There's still a normal force acting on this person. And that's due to the elevator floor pushing them up. If the elevator floor was not supporting their weight, they would literally just fall right through the floor. And off to the side, I'm just going to write acceleration equals zero meters per second squared. That is, the elevator is not accelerating them anymore. The elevator is not changing their velocity. The person and the elevator are now moving with constant velocity. They're still moving in the upward direction, which I can indicate with a little velocity vector, but they're not accelerating in that direction. Now, let's just do a little vector addition in this case, and then we'll use Newton's second law. So the normal force is in the upward direction. Now, the weight force is in the opposite direction, so I'm going to use the tip-to-tail method, and I'm going to line up the tip of the normal force vector with the tail of the weight force vector, and what you should see in this case, and we'll prove it in a moment, is that these two vectors have equal length, and they add up to be zero, or the net force is going to be zero newtons in this case. The elevator does not need to apply a force to keep this person moving with constant velocity. Now, to show you that, let's go back to Newton's second law, which says that if you add up the forces acting on an object, it equals the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. Now in this case, you know the acceleration, this term right here, has to be zero. So in this case, this entire product equals zero. And so you can rewrite Newton's second law as the sum of the forces equals zero. And when you write this out like this, it means that the forces balance. Anytime you see an equation where the sum of the forces equals zero, it means that the forces are going to balance. That is, there is no net force acting on an object. There are still forces acting on the object, but the net force is going to be zero. That is, the forces balance out. And now, if we add up the two forces acting on this person, in this case, we saw that there's a normal force and there is a weight force. So there are two forces acting on this person. In this case, the normal force is going to be in the upward direction, and the weight force is going to be in the downward direction. And that's why I'm going to subtract the weight force, because it's pointing in the negative y direction. And Newton's second law, in this case, says that those two forces add up to be zero. So what you need to do is you need to take this weight term, and you need to move it over to the other side, so that we can get an expression of the normal force, which is what a scale would read if you were standing on a scale in an elevator moving at constant velocity. Now to do that, you need to add w to both sides. And when you do that, what you should see is that the normal force is going to equal the weight. And in this case, this was just equal to mass times gravity, or if you remember, this was equal to 801 newtons, which we also worked out to be 180 pounds. So when you're in an elevator traveling at constant velocity, your weight force goes back to what your normal gravitational weight would be. That is, you would not be able to tell the difference in terms of weight, whether you were moving at constant velocity in an elevator, or whether you were just standing on a scale within your own bathroom. So in this special case, when you're moving at constant velocity, there is no net force acting on you. Now let's look at the other case. In this case, the elevator is going to start to slow down or decelerate, and the acceleration in this case is going to be zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a free body diagram for this case. So in this case, here is the object in which the forces are acting on. In this case, it's going to be a person. And in this case, you should know that the force of gravity is still acting on this person in the downward direction. There is a normal force, that is a force due to the floor pushing up on this person. And 
now you are accelerating, but you're slowing down, so your acceleration is in the downward direction. And in this case, we said that the elevator is slowing down at a rate of two meters per second per second. And what you're going to see now is there's going to be a net external force acting on this person, causing them to slow down. This person has some velocity in the upward direction. And in order to get that person to slow down, there must be a net force acting on that person. And so this will be F net. So let's do some vector addition over here on the side and see how this all works out. So what I'm going to do is the tip to tail method. In this case, we have the normal force vector in the upward direction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the tip of the weight force vector on the tail of the normal force vector. And then what happens is you can draw the net force vector in, the difference in these two vectors, from this point to this point. And this is going to equal your net force. This is the net force acting on this person, slowing them down. And by Newton's second law, you know the net force has a length of the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. That is how fast you're changing this object's velocity. Now, let's use Newton's second law again to figure out what the magnitude of the weight force is as the elevator slows down. In this case, you know, you, the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And in this case, the acceleration is not zero. Now, you know that there are two forces acting on this person, the normal force and the weight force. And what we're going to find is the net force by subtracting these two vectors. So in this case, you know the normal force is in the upward direction, and so you can say that you add it. And then you're going to subtract off the weight force because the weight force is in the downward direction. And in this case, this is going to equal mass times acceleration. And what you should see is we want to find the normal force. That is, this is going to be what the scale reads. So we're going to take this term and push it over to the other side. In order to do that, in order to isolate the normal force, you have to add the weight force to both sides. And when you do that, what you should see is that the normal force equals minus weight plus weight is zero, mass times acceleration plus the weight of this object. This is what we call the gravitational weight. And if you recall from the last session, you can now rewrite this as mass times the acceleration. This reflects the external force acting on this person as they're accelerating, or if you want to say decelerating. This MA term represents the external force acting on this person to slow this person down, plus the gravitational weight, which in this case is mass times gravity. Recall in the last session we said that weight equals mass times the gravitational acceleration, and we sometimes call this the uh, gravitational weight, the weight that you would measure if you were not being accelerated by an outside force. And again, this normal force, n, this represents what the scale is actually reading. Now we can factor the mass term out of both of these terms here. And why we do that is just because it simplifies the problem. It makes plugging in numbers a lot easier. And so when you do that, you get mass times the quantity of the acceleration plus the gravitational acceleration. Now in this case, we said the mass of this person was 81.7 kilograms. And the acceleration of the elevator is negative 2 meters per second squared. And you have to add the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And when you do this, you should get 81.7 kilograms times negative 2 meters per second squared plus 9.8 meters per second squared should work out to be 7.8 meters per second squared, which should work out to be 637.5 newtons. That is, your weight decreases as the elevator begins to slow down. And now, let's just make sense of this number. All right, so let's just convert this number over to units of pounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert the 637.5 newtons over to units of pounds so that we can make sense of it. So in this case, you know 4.45 newtons is equivalent to one pound. And notice that your units of newtons cancels out. And when you do that, you should get 143.3 pounds. So your weight has decreased by about 37 pounds. Now, one of the things that you should notice while you're in an elevator is not only does your weight increase during the first part of the elevator trip, and so 
to summarize, what you should notice in this problem is, as you're so to summarize this entire problem, what you should notice is, as you're accelerated by the elevator, your weight is going to increase. And then what happens is the elevator stops accelerating you and you start moving with constant velocity. And there's no longer an external force accelerating you. And so what you should see is that your weight or your sensation of weight returns to what your normal gravitational weight is. And then what happens is as the elevator begins to slow down, there's a net force acting on you in the opposite direction uh, that you're traveling, and so you feel a little bit lighter. And you can actually measure all of these things if you were to take an elevator ride with a scale. 